This is the part before the podcast. Oh, wait, hold on. Well, nothing to those Eastern line. That was a signal to Cheeto. <laughs> For what? That we are now beginning. Uh huh. See, before, this is going to be very confusing because he might put in a yeah. whole fake beginning that we did. We did a fake beginning that wound up failing. Now we're succeeding in our fake beginning. Do you, are, are you picking up what I'm putting down? No, I don't think I am unless this is, the, this is like the inception of fake beginnings. So this before, is the inception of fake beginnings. We fucked up the fake beginning first. Right. The beginning Second, where we knew that we were already pretending that we were not doing a thing that we were really doing. Second, we're seeming to be somewhat shitty at our second attempt. I feel like we're actually being shitty at our second attempt. That part is true. The only way that we can begin is if I say this episode of the Justin Robert Young podcast is brought to you by fucking nobody. feedback on and that is uh our, our big edge of tomorrow podcast <laughs> that was uh co-piloted by one brett the am trick around so yeah. brett rejoins us how you doing good i feel like technically i'm on this show every single time that we're both in oakland at the same time it's a fairly good point <laughs> Considering we are very rarely in the yeah. same place at the same time, which made it laughable that we tried to do a podcast regularly. Right. <laughs> that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in hindsight. Yeah. Considering. Yeah. Like, it was a good idea for us to be doing stuff and recording it. Right. right? Yeah. It was a bad idea to think that we would ever be within five feet right. of each other yeah. to record a I podcast. I think we do technically have some really funny, like, recorded phone conversations somewhere. We do. That was another somewhere. idea, and, and it kind of went nowhere. But we're here now. That's all that matters. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff, man. We got a smorgasbord uh, of topics here for you, uh, including I got a letter. That's part of the reason why I wanted Brett to come in here, because it's very Brett-centric, very Amtrekker in need of advice uh, kind of material here. We're also going to talk about the Antichrist. I saw someone do heroin last night, and we're going <laughs> to preview no less than six topics that are upcoming. We have all sorts of, of amazing topics that are happening in life right now, and, uh, and we're going to cover each and every one of them. But first, I want to talk about Sam Pepper and... and for those of you, Brett, well, what do you know about this Sam Pepper shenanigans? I know almost nothing. I know really high-level headline stuff. I know that he is a YouTube guy who pulls pranks and quotes and that he did something really bad, may or may not have been to a woman. That's the sum total of my knowledge. It may or may know. not be right. That's all you know. That That is your knowledge of Sam Pepper. So here's how you know, I can explain to you what, what Sam Pepper is into right now. He does these videos, which apparently are their own genre. He is not alone in these kind of very much from the perspective of a kind of lonely adolescent male for whom women, pretty women, let's say in particular, are space aliens. <laughs> so reacting to them in a way that's just like, oh my God, 
look, I scared this zoo, this beautiful peacock zoo creature. How funny is that? And huh. that's kind of the stuff that he's done. So he's like lassoed women. Uh, he's handcuffed himself to women. And in this video, he has a big hoodie, right? Mm -hmm. This has, video. This is the video that he's gotten him in trouble. Okay. Uh, he's got a fake arm. His real arm. That little scamp. <laughs> in the hoodie. Asks a lady for directions. Kind of reaches out. With his real hand, unbeknownst to her, does what was colloquially referred to in a bygone America as a goosing. <laughs> Just a little pant. Uh huh. Right on the bum. Uh huh. These women, for whom have, by the classical definition of what we in the business like to call the law, <laughs> have been assaulted, <laughs> right. react. Negatively, yeah, on account of they were assaulted. On a, on account of the fact that they were in fact assaulted, and so he's looking, pointing behind him, like to somebody, it's like, oh man, that guy fucking pinched in the butt. Look at that. <laughs> but he's British, so he's like, oh, oh yeah, he's you know, pinching the butt. Oh, he... <laughs> did he now? I, I oh, I'm just saying, no, saying pepper. He was just saying, uh, <laughs> pinch me in the butt. Okay. Uh, so he does two videos. One of him pinching girls' butts, and then apparently another one of girls pinching guys' butts. Hmm. Uh, and then, here's where the trouble kind of starts for, for young Sam. Young yeah. Sam-wise. Sam has a letter written about him by somebody who's local here. It's a friend of, of me and Ashley's. Lacey Green. Lacey Green does a sex education a vlog very popular called sex plus she writes this open letter on tumblr that's like so by the way this isn't funny it's really bad you should <laughs> stop doing it the tone of the initial letter that fairly, she wrote she writes is very like respectful up top like we like it's very hard to build a successful channel you have an extraordinarily successful channel you should be proud of it but please know that these videos are damaging on a lot of societal levels she makes these points a lot better and I'm not interested in necessarily having the argument on whether you know where her letter ranks in terms of what people want to believe about it I thought it was a very well written letter however the world starts falling down around Sam Pepper all these other YouTube people start coming out of the woodwork and as far as big names go uh, it is a who's who of YouTube which for guys like you and me Men in their early 30s, <laughs> it's like hearing about, oh, well, all the top Japanese pop sensations are in on it. <laughs> Kayamoto san. Uh, it's like it's like listening to, to, to a Stefan sketch. Right. It's like all the top YouTubers signed it. <laughs> Hannah Hart, <laughs> Cheese and Kittens, <laughs> <laughs> the Dick Brothers. Like it's I have no idea who these people are <laughs> but I am led to believe that if I click on their names they have a billion followers right, right? and the few that I do know like, like Hannah Hart My Drunk Kitchen and, and oh that was a real thing yeah oh I see so there are very popular people that are that respond to this and Sam gets banned from VidCon which is kind of like the big YouTube mm. convention uh, and is said by another channel. You ever by watch who? Those, who ban who's in the, charge? The, the VidCon organizers. The they just said that you can't VidCon. come? They're like, hey, people who do pranks about assaulting women, not invited. Wow. De-invite them. Yeah. Right? He was also a regular on those YouTubers React videos. It's like the kids react, old oh, yeah. people react. They have a YouTubers React uh -huh. thing. They're like, yeah, by the way, no more of that. Which... We're just, we're going to move right on. We don't need to stop here. Yeah. But this is the point in which I want everybody to take out their notebooks in which everybody notes everybody's behavior at all time and say, <laughs> this dude definitely fucking was lassoing ladies and handcuffing himself <laughs> to them. And then this one, listen, better the decision be made sooner rather than later. Right. But obviously nobody's really paying attention to these things until it becomes a major thing. Right. We can move right on. At this point, he goes into what I'm going to assume to be damage control mode and releases a video 
that says, gotcha! <laughs> Which, when you are being accused of videotaping assault, it is a bold gambit. <laughs> a bold gambit right. to pull the like, ha ha, you've all fallen into my <laughs> trap. Like, Finally, I've raised awareness. <laughs> exactly. He pulls the I raised awareness gambit. <laughs> so he says, uh, by the way, uh, a lot of you calls it the reveal. <laughs> The reveal. The reveal is that he indeed has been setting us all up. This mm -hmm. is a social experiment. <laughs> uh, and he wanted, he, like, people reacted very negatively, and that's what he wanted. Because he, Sam Pepper, is not just a mere prankster. <laughs> he is indeed somebody who makes you think. His words. Think. Not mine. <laughs> think odd. Makes you think about your life. Turn it up and down a little bit. <laughs> um, he says that a friend of his was in a relationship. And at this point in his video, I shit you not, full house, fucking piano music, <laughs> important lesson to Kimmy, you know, fucking music comes yeah. up, right? Friend of mine was in a relationship he was abused physically and mentally. How related to Russell Brand is he? Uh, he is, it, to just give you a sense, if Sasha Baron Cohen <laughs> was 10 years younger uh -huh. and, were parod and was parodying the, the aughts or, or the, the tens, right? And not the late 90s, <laughs> early 2000s, he would be a character. <laughs> Like, it's shocking that he is not a Sasha Baron Cohen character. That he's right? actually a human that being. That he's actually a human being. Yeah. Uh, so he says a friend of his was abused by his lady, and he wants to raise awareness about how abuse happens to everybody. <laughs> also, he's found it offensive that female fans of his have pinched his butt in public scenarios. <laughs> and he wanted to let everybody know that he's uncomfortable with it. <laughs> At which point, we're talking about this on the after show of Night Attack. And Mitzula, a, a brilliant uh, man and fan of the show, writes in the chat room, my favorite summation of his argument, which is, my friend tripped over his girlfriend's purse. So I made this mute, I made this video where I motorboat random women. <laughs> <laughs> So the key point, to be fair to him, is he is saying in that video that everybody in the video was an actress mm -hmm. who was scripted. They knew what was going on. Okay. None of that has really panned out. Like, it's not like there's been a rush of, like, all the actresses saying, like, yeah, no, we were. Have there been a rush of people saying, like, no, I was not an actress? I don't think that much has kind of happened on gotcha. that front. And I don't think anybody's hunted them down. I don't think that they have come forward. Right. Right. Because they're probably strangers. In the <laughs> concept of the video, they are indeed strangers on right. the street. So here's where things get interesting. <laughs> the world begins further falling. Right. Down around Sam Pepper's ankles. There come forth multiple on-camera sexual assault claims from women that say that, like, he was very sexually forward, forced sex on them, grabbed them inappropriately. And one, not, like, on camera, but the lady is, like, mouth down, right? Straight up rape allegation. What? Yeah. The R word. Yeah. Right? More so than that, anal rape allegation. The worst of all rapes. Because <laughs> there are levels. I mean, I'm not saying... You're saying a little bit, do but there's levels. Rankings. <laughs> My personal rankings, for which I'm entitled to, right. the worst of all. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at which point, this is very dark. 
Yeah. But it's dark for a reason. I'm telling you this story in, in a somewhat comedic context. Because I want to read to you Sam Pepper's Twitter. Now understand that this guy is being accused of very serious illegal things. His <laughs> career as a YouTuber is falling apart. Dissolving as if acid rain was washing over it. And meanwhile, Lacey releases another video saying that YouTube is considering stringent uh, guidelines that you can get banned from the platform for life based on these incidents. Yeah. This is all that's happening. I now bring you to Sam Pepper's Twitter. <laughs> I just had a great realization that we'll go into as soon as you start reading these. <laughs> uh, so this is in the middle of, uh, of him... De <laughs> defending his situation, right? Uh, this is September 23rd. Uh, just to let people who are confused know, all people in this video gave prior consent to acting in the experiment. Later on September 23rd, the world swirling around him. Why do colds exist? Really? <laughs> so, so He's so desperate to get him back to normalcy. He's just like, I'm not a rapist. I didn't sexually assault those women. Right. But for real, you guys, can, can we all agree that runny noses are just the worst? <laughs> the worst. So it's like rape, anal rape, colds. <laughs> but here, I think we're actually missing something with this Twitter. I think this is not unlike uh, some of my favorite things, like the fortune cookie in bed, or even better, Neil, Gra Neil deGrasse Tyson's plebeians. <laughs> yes, I think there's a piece of information you add we're missing. On a, right. a little suffix to anything. Right, and so looking at this screen now, I can see all of Sam Pepper's uh, Twitter feed from September 23rd to about September 26th, and it's very clear that the last four words that are not included on every one of these tweets is, I'm not a rapist. Yes. So, <laughs> so if we could just reread these. Okay. Why do colds exist? Really, I'm not a rapist. I'm not a rapist. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a rapist. Really, I'm not a rapist. Uh, uh, I, I believe his cat, or no, his pug has a Twitter account called Sir Chinston. <laughs> There's Glad to be home with little Sir Chinston. I missed him. I'm not a rapist. All right. There's a really good one if we go a little bit further. I think it was towards September. Now, here's, oh, here it is. Now, here's, here's something else that happened. Now, meanwhile, amongst all these, uh, Lacey, who, again, has been the ringleader of all this, starts getting emails from Sam at sam-pepper.co.uk. Right. Which is his website and would seem to be his personal email uh, saying, like, you're fucking going to pay for this. You better shut the fuck up. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen to you, but know that it'll be bad. Uh, and then replies, hey, guys. And uh, uh, this is actually what's written. Someone is spoofing my email address and sending people emails from an account I haven't used in years. Be aware! And then links the Wikipedia definition of spoofing. <laughs> I'm not a rapist. All right. I like that. So if we just remove some of these punctuations, it's be aware, I'm not a rapist. Yes. Really, I'm not a rapist. <laughs> and my personal favorite, how is it only 10 a.m. and I'm already at 44% battery on my phone? Come on, I'm not a rapist. I'm not a rapist. Come on, I'm not a rapist. Come on, guys. I'm not a rapist. In case anybody's been wondering, I'm not a rapist. And one just above that. Friday, I'm not a rapist. It's <laughs> just it's Friday. I'm not a rapist. 7 a.m. waking up in the morning. Not a rapist. It's Friday, Friday. And that's the last uh, uh, tweet he has had. Uh... Let me just say something right now. And this is not necessarily yeah. about Sam Pepper, although I believe that we can draw some correlations. Or I have drawn some correlations. <laughs> if... So, and you want to, to take on this? Let's go ahead. Since apparently he wants to just react to the world uh -huh. with these fucking, like, 80s comedy cliches of, like... <laughs> Did you ever notice it's 10 a.m. and it's only 44% battery on your phone? What's up with that? Let's 
go ahead and, and do a little uh, taking uh, 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 inspiration from Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> you might be a rapist. <laughs> if somebody writes an open letter on Tumblr and what follows is multiple rape allegations, you might be a rapist. If somebody looks directly into camera and says you're a rapist, you might be a rapist. If you have gone on Twitter multiple times to change the subject and people keep insisting you're a rapist, you might be a rapist. If you insist that your rape allegations are all for a good cause, you might be a rapist. And if your name is Sam Pepper... And you've made multiple videos assaulting women. You might be a rapist. <laughs> We're going to come back with all sorts of funny stuff uh, that don't include rape. Although he is a rapist. Fuck him. Oh, not according to his Twitter. I am not a rapist. Uh, we are doing Neshcom for the rest of the show. Uh, so go ahead and, and pick it up. It's Mercury Counter uh, by Neshcom. So go ahead and, and do that. Uh, I, I know. All right. So, so uh, the, the, the never ending fight with me and the board. Uh, I want to make sure that I get the board right and I get my audio levels right. So uh, I, I understand that apparently uh, there's some confusion here. Uh, but hopefully we're, we're back. It seems like our, our, our levels are back to where they need to be. And now I'll bring Brett up. But yeah, that's what we're we are getting some room mic stuff. We'll figure it out. Hopefully we will. Hopefully it's been listenable because I thought that was really great. Yeah. Very rarely can you shoot the gap and try to make a subject that dark funny. And I feel like <laughs> we kind of did. As long as you just make sure that you you understand that the humor is based on the fact that this guy's a weasel and a worm. Oh, totally. And that Jeff Foxworthy makes everything uh, bluer, <laughs> especially collars. He might be a rapist. Uh, doodle, 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 doodle. I got an email. Email said, hey, jury, I'm not happy with the current situation where I live, and I'm going to be moving in late October, early November to get my life straightened out. I was just wondering if you had any tips for me in this huge crossroads period of my life. I have no job lined up, but I will be spending a bunch of time in the coming weeks looking, and I have a place to stay when I get there with no debt to my name and a good chunk of money saved up. Thanks for any advice you can give me. I love your show, and it has helped me a lot in this transition period I'm going through. There's only one man I know for whom uh, I can bring in as an expert witness for completely turning his life upside down, uh, and that is Brett the Amtrek Roundsville. You are the Amtrekker because you left a good job at a major corporation that for in many ways was a dream gig. Uh, so you could travel the, uh, the country, and I guess more than one country, because you went up to Canada, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and complete a list of goals that you had set out for yourself. Uh, so d what do you say? Because I'm sure people come to you with like, hey, I want to do some crazy stuff because you did some crazy stuff. Like, What advice would you give our emailer here? Yeah, all the time. And um, I don't know, how, how good of advice do we want to give? Because uh, the real advice that I would love to give is significantly less funny. But um, I have this idea that I ran across uh, throughout my travel. So even before I started traveling and before people started uh, sending me all of their feedback about how much they wanted to do what I was doing, I would still run into people who were doing similar things at similar times. And there's a, a great saying that everyone knows and loves called, not all who wander are lost. Yeah. Right? A Tolkien quote. Uh, except 
most are. So if you were looking at a Venn <laughs> diagram of those who wander and those who, who are lost, it is almost a circle. And by the way, 90% of the people who love that quote yeah. are lost. Yes, and wandering. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, so not only is it almost a circle, but there are a lot of things that you can run away from that don't disappear. Uh, and I think that is the biggest part where those who wander and are lost fail. So you're saying like, like what are the, like moving geographically. Yeah. Once you get over those endorphins of like, I made a change, I did something. You better hope that the things that you felt in the, in, in the, in the rut about are not just your own personal habits. Well, yes. And even beyond that, they may not be your own personal habits. They just may be situations that you can't extricate yourself from. And I'm not like, uh, all I'm saying is that geography doesn't solve very many problems. If you're moving for anything other than adventure, then make sure you're moving for the right reasons. What did you find while you were on the road were the elements of your life that were not based in in you know where you were living in Southern California that, that you had to realize that you were working on because now because you were out in space yeah you were literally like you had no ge- geography yeah. to blame for anything everything that was happening was just your own decisions and decision making was there anything that you realized like oh wow I didn't realize this was just me yeah well most of this uh, most of this comes from me getting ridiculously lucky right like I left things that I loved behind so I yeah. had like a pretty good life going out what surprised me more than anything was how much of it was the same when I got back. Like there was a, there was no real like deep rooted change to life even after wandering around for two years. Like you so still you come back. So you didn't come back as Gandalf the White and now you have powers and like the world is clearer and you can just saunter into situations and figure them out any better than you could have when right. you left. I, I had definitely some more life experience, but basically I came back as Brett better at sleeping in bus stations. <laughs> I join you now at yeah. the turning of the tide. <laughs> I am Brett, better at sleeping at bus stations. How bad were you at These sleeping at bus These are my dirty robes. <laughs> How bad were you sleeping at bus stations before? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> but I got better. <laughs> Life marches on. That said, I am never not for adventure. And I am all about moving and uh, trying new things. But I'm about trying new things to try new things. If you're trying to run away from something, just make sure you're running away from the right things. What do you think are the top three problems that follow you? Clingy problems that nobody wants to admit. And we tend to just blame on like, oh, well, you know, this place I'm at, right? Yeah. Only if I move to a bigger city, a smaller (laughs) city, a different city, a city without my family, a city with my family. (laughs) Like, what, what are those things that are really the like major issues the top one that this guy has handled really well so not an issue at all is money like money does not stop being a problem if you go somewhere else uh even like as we have learned like we moved to a giant city where we get paid ridiculous sums to do ridiculous things but it turns out life costs a ridiculous amount of money to stay here yeah uh and those problems don't go away if you're bad at that kind of thing By you're the gonna way, be bad at it somewhere else too we had the good fortune mm-hmm. to move to a up-and-coming neighborhood Yes. We are very rapidly on the cusp of having the bad fortune of living in an extraordinarily expensive neighborhood as it fucking explodes and blows up. Like we are, oh, right. we are, we are past the tipping point of like, I feel like if you guys, cause you guys have looked out for like yeah. houses to buy and everything. If, if you guys were to start your thing now, it would just be like, all right, well we can't even look anywhere around. Yeah, I feel like we already missed. Like we could have yeah. what we considered completely out of the realm of our uh, of our possibilities. Like a year ago, yeah, we should have bought like anything, anything it that was just immedi- ridiculous. It would have immediately paid off, right? Like immediately, the value, yeah. Like by the time we signed paperwork, we could have sold it for more. Yeah, uh, yeah. This neighborhood is getting nuts. However, our work neighborhood to segue into our <laughs> next topic. Yes. Uh, Unless uh, you, there's more you'd like to add about no, moving no, across no. I mean, I guess like I think uh, uh, I, I do want to finish out our, our our top three. Yeah. Because I feel like that's okay. For whatever reason, Brett, people have come to this podcast for serious advice about their life, <laughs> and I have no idea why this has happened. Maybe it's because uh, I, I I have a willingness to discuss these kinds of things yeah. on on a base level, but for whatever reason, it has. 
I, I have no idea why it has become a thing. Money is certainly a huge one. Yeah. I would say my first one is insecurity. Baseline mm. insecurity. Yeah. About whatever. You know, just not being able to wake up and look yourself in the mirror and Stuart Smalley that shit and be like, <laughs> I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and God damn it, people like me. Right. You know, like if that doesn't change and you can't sow yourself to a lifestyle or a city or your family and expect to draw the meaningful self-esteem from there. Although that's oftentimes options one, two, and three for everybody with low self-esteem. Right. Is let me just say, and that's, you know, there's that, like that fine line between like, Oh, I really like, you know, New York or San Francisco or Chicago. Then there's the one friend of yours. That's like, Mr. New York or San Francisco or Chicago <laughs> and they love it and they keep talking shit about anything else that's not it. That's my huge red flag <laughs> for like, I don't know if you like yourself. I think yeah. you like a, 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 a you know, a, a non-human entity for which you can shape, shape and mold in your head right. more than you like yourself. And if that's the case, your shit's inverted, bro. Like yeah. you need to figure your own self out. On the upside, that's someone that at least found a place that they like. So that's like a step in the right <laughs> direction, right? I mean, but like, but it it, it is that love and hate, yeah. right? Where it's like, then all of a sudden some shit goes wrong and they blame the city. Yeah. Like when you involve an, a, a, a non-person like object into the conversation you're only right. asking for problems and that's something that like geeks like us in general are very good at doing is oh, involving God. a non-person so i would even say rounding out the top three Let's is go relationships top three. oh shit. because because the problem is even if you are great at relationships but you somehow had bad relationships in the place you're leaving that means you're really good at finding people who are bad at relationships <laughs> and you won't stop being really good at finding people who are bad at relationships also, if you are burning bridges that hard, <laughs> like if you are, uh, if you have a flamed out in a relationship so spectacularly that you need to leave the city, there are more issues at work than just your relationships. Yeah. A bad relationship is not Godzilla. It should not level an entire geographical region <laughs> useless for you. You know, you should be able to survive. Yeah. And, and no. That's not to say that like sometimes change of paint changes everything. Right? I, like there are plenty of good reasons to move and to move far. And I will never shit on someone's desire to try something new and to experience the world. Uh, but again, there are plenty of things that aren't going like, to be fixed. And, and, and Rick Foster saying the biggest reason I left Wisconsin was become a, because of a relationship. Not to say that that's not. Also because it was Wisconsin. Come I mean, on. A little <laughs> easier to leave Wisconsin when it's, I don't know, motherfucking Wisconsin. <laughs> JK. Uh, Milwaukee. Weren't you just in Milwaukee? Or was that Tuesday? Not recently, but I really like Milwaukee. It's a cool yeah. city. Uh, no, I, I, the Midwestern, I don't know. I like hanging out in Midwestern cities. The key to Midwestern cities is knowing someone from that city. If you can stand out on a grass lawn drinking PBR and throwing horseshoes, then that city wins. That's a good point. Actually, me and Ashley are looking at like, like a weekend trip. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I just sold myself on Chicago. Oh. Because that United, like we yeah, can totally easy. get out there for 10. And lay flat. No, we got to do it. It's only two hours difference. This is the segment we like to call in the show. Justin yells at Ashley in a different room. Uh, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. All right. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go back. We have uh, this city. Yeah. Oakland. Yeah. Lake Mary. Booming. Mm. Man, here's how booming this city is. Can we not tell Tom that it's booming? Can we? Can no one tell Tom that Lake Merritt is booming, please? <laughs> Tom, who it's owns, really important that who, no one tells Tom that Lake Merritt is booming? <laughs> who owns Brett's apartment at this point? So here's a funny story. I just realized <laughs> shh, Lake Merritt blows. <laughs> Still a lot of crime here, though. Oh, really? Still a lot yeah, of crime. Yeah. The key about Lake Merritt is knowing whether the guy following you is looking for your parking spot or your wallet. Am I right? So me and Ashley are talking about like, oh, you know, if if, if Brett and uh, and Katie wind up moving out, like it would be nice to like get into their place. Then I'm like, man, if that happened now, though, 
Like, I feel like I would feel guilty, yeah. like, taking that place. Like, I'd be like, no, Tom, you're a friend. You need to, like, make a ton of money by selling this <laughs> immediately because you were well, going to sell it. Well, I don't want to get into that. But bottom line, so this, that's selling an, is not the right move for them, but renting at higher rates is. That is a great illustration of how amazing this neighborhood in Lake Merritt is. We went, it's like fucking friends now. Me yeah. and Ashley fucking go down... To a, a, a coupled own wine store. Bay Grape. Talk and it's fucking <laughs> like loose and it's a yeah. fun time. We stay after hours. It's hilarious and amazing. Not so for another neighborhood in San Francisco. And I will tell that story next. Two neighborhoods that we frequent. I came back from Fuck, where did I come back from? Dallas. I was in Dallas. And I decided to come back to Oakland, and so the next day I got to go into the city. So I go into the city. Turns out my buddy Steve, fellow Syracuse graduate, is living in the mission. Syracuse, the football team, is playing on TV, national television. So I figure, all right, I'll make plans with him. Go watch Syracuse get the shit kicked out of him by Notre Dame. And then I'm walking back to my car. Brett, how would you describe the area, which is where our office is for the go game uh, in San Francisco? How would you describe that street? I don't think the street is worth describing more so than the game we all love to play. Is that dog feces or human feces? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's certainly a, a fair game. Yeah. A game that you have ample opportunities to play. Ample. Especially in the summer. And we are moving into kind of peak hobo territory. Yeah, September is a beautiful weather nonstop in San Francisco. Yeah. And because San Francisco has a tendency to get cold at any time during the year. Mm-hmm. So, like September is the only time where it doesn't. You right. know, it, it's pretty much just... Straight, no sweater, gorgeous, all day, every day. And thus, the homeless come out. And this is a street that is three blocks off a district in San Francisco that is renowned for its authenticity, (laughs) which also kind of means it's old and dirty. Right. But it's real. Yeah, real old and dirty. Real old and dirty. <laughs> We're literally like four blocks from where uh, the Alamo Draft House is trying to build a big new hip West Coast presence. Which they were, I mean, six months after they announced it, mm-hmm. I moved to San Francisco, which has been two and a half years. They got the permitting like three months ago. Because it's so fucking hard. Yeah to build in that area because they don't let anything get built that's new Mm -hmm. because they want to keep the things that are old because those are worth more. (laughs) This is an entire discussion about the retardedness of city planning uh, that we can get into, but we won't. Just know that that's the neighborhood that we're talking about. And therefore, the few blocks off this authentic real neighborhood tends to be a bit of a blind spot for cops and, and and largely because this authentic real neighborhood has been very well gentrified over the yeah. last four years or so so it's pushing all the authenticity authenticity three blocks over i think you actually stumbled on a great word for it it's authentic <laughs> it is it is a lot like that it's on the authenticism scale <laughs> uh so this time of year, it tends to be a bit of a fucking carnival of homelessness out there. Yeah, Hoovervilles. And Hoovervilles. and this is a new thing even this year where apparently now you are issued a tent when you show up to the city. There's It's urban camping more than it is homelessness. <laughs> it is. 
So lately, this year, the, the 2014 edition of Hobo Palooza <laughs> uh, has been particularly interesting in that I have seen. There's been a lot more wandering out into the street. It's I like the like. commercialization of Burning Man <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like now hobos are building their own businesses centered around their tents. So like there, I, I saw a pimp arguing with his whore in the street the other day. Yeah. A lot of this happens on Saturdays and Sundays, to be fair. Right. Because there's not really a lot of traffic. There's not a lot of cars on the street. Yeah. So like the hobos just move in. What night was it that the football game was on? Because that's where I saw Saturday. business booming. Saturday. Wait, like last right. night? Last was night that? was when everything happened. Okay. Uh, so I am walking back, and I see somebody right in the front of our door, the, the office door, mm -hmm. a man slumped over leaning against a light pole. And I'm like, like all right. Do. It's homeless people. They're out on the street. Uh, now, we are getting to like the the what I will now colorfully coin as the Romero line of where you are cognizant of the fact that there are more of them than you yeah. like you would in a zombie scenario. It's kind of a hobo saturation point. And where it's like, all right, I will need to go into evasive maneuvers if they all chase me at once. Yeah. Right. So I'm kind of noticing, and, and they have their tent city. I can't and open the office door fast enough. I have to take a different route. So I'm not even. I'm not even going to go into the office. I'm just yeah. going to go right into my car. Now this is not as bad. I'm thinking easy because another time, about two weeks ago, there was a homeless man sleeping with his head literally under my exhaust pipe. <laughs> no way. And I'm like. Hmm, here's a fun choice. Yeah. Do I wake the possibly unstable homeless man <laughs> uh, to move so I don't fucking like, like start my car and blow exhaust right in his face? Yeah. Do I just blow exhaust in his face? Because at that point, if he's uh, awake and, and unstable, at least I'm locked in my car. <laughs> So I, I went, uh, the, I tried to shoot the gap and just slam my car door really loud. Uh-huh. And uh, he was like, oh, okay. And it kind of moved away. I'm like, all right. There's none of that awkwardness. It's just a guy. He's not even by the back of the car. He's kind of in front of it. Yeah. In fact, he's kind of right in front of my headlights. <laughs> so I get into my car. I turn on my car. My headlights automatically go on. And I see this man is slumped up against the light pole because... He's literally injecting heroin in front of me. <laughs> He's got a heroin needle sticking out of his arm. I have never seen this in my life. I've seen people do rails of cocaine. I've seen them do acid, <laughs> ecstasy. I've seen them drink to excess. I have seen dangerous levels of intoxication and a, uh, a, a, a panoply of fucking drugs being ingested. I've never <laughs> seen in my life. Anybody doing heroin in front of me until last night. Yeah. At which point, he fucking slowly turns his head as if a dinosaur from Jurassic Park to look <laughs> at me and just go, <laughs> What's up, bro? I'm just doing heroin. <laughs> like, I, I just feel like, what you look in that dick nose? That's what the look he gives me is, what's your fucking problem? I'm just lying on the street doing heroin. And bear in mind, this is like three feet from the door of a multi-million dollar company. Yes. Yeah. Like, not even, no, not even three feet. <laughs> he could have kicked his leg out and hit our door. <laughs> like, he was only by the way that he was sitting made him not touch the fucking door. <laughs> So he was sitting on the ground. On the ground. Oh, okay. Literally, like, if you were to just draw straight lines yeah. out of, like, the doorway, his torso, or, like, like, below his torso, his legs, would be in those lines. Wow. Literally in front of the door. Not figuratively. <laughs> right. Multi-million dollar company. Yeah. Doing something silly, like slinging fucking scavenger hunts. Oh, yeah. This dude riding the white pony. <laughs> 
on a Saturday <laughs> night. S A T U R D A Y night. <laughs> Doing heroin on fucking Treat Street. That's so crazy. Like that street has just gotten crazier and crazier. Like as as bizarre as that is, like it's kind of out of my realm of understanding because I didn't see it happen. But what blows my mind is that it's not just homelessness anymore. They br- they built it to a new level of like what what's like businesslessness. <laughs> Like there are people running like businesses. So you, I didn't on the even street. notice this. Apparently, how do you not notice a bicycle it? Bicycle chop shop. It's either a chop shop. I would suspect a chop shop on account of there are a lot of nicely newly painted bikes there in pieces. Yeah. Uh, like spray painted black or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but even if it's not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a legitimate business or not. All that matters is that these guys, no joke, one hundred percent, not exaggerating, between the two of them, own more things than I do. <laughs> Their inventory is greater than the actual bike shop that is across the street There's from them. There's a literal bike shop right across. They're 20 feet from them, them is They're an actual <laughs> bike shop that has a smaller inventory than two guys living in a tent on the street. It's businesslessness. <laughs> Theater Monkey says, but the real question, how much is the rent for free? Yeah, it's Move free. Move to Trade Street. They have their own chamber of commerce. They're, putting, they're passing out leaflet, leaflets. If you were uh, homelessness here, you'd be homelessness by now. <laughs> <laughs> we're back with our fall preview. Pride is balling. No. So you don't care how much it is. Because you don't care what the price is, right? We have a lot of uh, expert opinions, uh, and we are going to bring them to you to let you guys, you the dear listener, live a better life. You ain't out here to fuck around. We already gave you advice on on when and why to move. Gave you advice on where to be homeless. (laughs) Gave you advice about how to spot rapists in your daily life. Here's a hint. They do it on YouTube already. You don't have to look hard. (laughs) No. If multiple people are calling you a rapist, you might be a rapist. Uh, We are going to give you the the fall preview, fall entertainment preview. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, I'm I'm just going to start you off with something that I know you are the expert in. Uh, Saturday Night Live, 40th uh, uh, anniversary. Yeah, exciting. Big year. Seems like the first year out of a rebuilding year for them. They they kind of blew up the cast. They had to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of change. This yeah. is should be a better year, a more consistent year than last year. Yeah. What was your thought on the on the premiere and going forward? Who are the people to watch? Uh, it seems they chose to rebuild their rebuilding year, which is probably a good choice on their part. Uh, there are a couple of cool a reboot, guys. a reboot, a rebuild a boot. Um. Guys to look out for, uh, there's a new SNL Weekend Update uh, host who didn't do an amazing job, but, I mean, it's his first time. You can't fault him for that. And then there was uh, two people who both did segments on Weekend Update that were great. I don't remember their names. Uh, I don't know that you do. No, I don't. I think it was Lillian something, and then Pete was the, the dude's name. He was a kid, like a Young white guy, uh, normal-aged black lady. <laughs> normal-aged. That's yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, Chris Pratt did a like fairly disappointing job, I think. We watched a couple of skits beforehand, but yeah. uh, you didn't really see much of Chris Pratt. She, you shouldn't call them digital shorts if they're not going to be as good as, as Lonely Island. You shouldn't do like, them. Just call them something else. Don't do them if they're not going to be good. That's, yeah. I feel like that's a good rule of thumb. 
Like if they're not funny, well, don't. no, they kind of have to because they want to make the YouTube viral thing, right? They can do that with the skits they already do. It's not like can it's not they? being taped. Can they? The stuff that's going around today is that Pete dudes thing. All right. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. I mean, like, well, I mean, that will, but that will always be like, oh, look what they did on SNL. Yeah. Which is. The digital shorts are always supposed to be like, oh, these could just be YouTube videos because here's a mind blowing idea. Yeah. They got guys who were doing successful YouTube videos to just do them for SNL. Right. If I you, don't know. What was Kyle Mooney doing before? He was like he is he, in my opinion, is the problem here. And I hate to call people out, but he like no, go, he has go. this weird call stick. Out. strong takes. No, he we just have has hot this, takes here. I don't have hot takes. That's hot not, I'm takes. not a hot take guy. Hot takes. But I don't. I'm not a big fan of the like bad actor. That's you. Stick. You're blowing. You're blowing it up right now, Brett. <laughs> hot with a hot take. Well, your hot takes. You're I'm dropping not a hot bombs. Take guy, bro. Dropping bombs. Uh, so like the thing that uh, like Lonely Planet brought was uh, one. They had the knowledge no, of the Lonely space. No, Lonely Island. Lonely Planet's the other thing. No, Lonely Planet because they uh, they like to travel. They're and also then, the and travel then they bloggers. Write about it. <laughs> And then they write about it, and then they make a song about traveling on their boat. I was there. I saw it all. Uh, Lonely Island. So anyway, they brought, like, these, uh, like, like everything was a little bit different. The ones that hit the biggest were usually their musical pieces. But they had, like, this broad spectrum of things that they like to do. Uh, what the Kyle Mooney's digital shorts are largely doing is the same thing over and over and over again. And it wasn't that funny the first time when your shtick is just, hey, I'm a really bad actor doing this thing that other bad actors do to make fun of bad acting. Disappointing. Super disappointing. Very Especially disappointing. this week's one after they had like an entire summer to think about. I feel like that's always their undoing though. Yeah. Is like if you have you ever listened to interviews about like how sketches go wrong or mm-hmm. the or like the negative elements of the SNL writers room? Yeah. It's always stories of the incessant over perfection and like the hierarchy getting in the way of just like a fresh original idea that will either live or die. Yeah. Which to that point, that digital short is a seemingly uncluttered idea. It's just a bad idea. Yeah. Right? Not like a hat on a hat. It's just a really bad hat. Like, it, it, it just is, is yeah. People are saying, like, how long did Laser Cats go? Laser Cats was fucking really funny. I mean, maybe it was really funny the first time. I think it kind of got annoying after a couple a, years. I was not a huge fan of Laser Cats. Not a huge Cats, fan no. of Laser Cats. <laughs> All right. Uh, Next fall preview. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, preview movies based on posters. Uh, all right. These are movies that are coming out in, in, in a theater near you. Look at this. This is Jimmy. Uh, all is by my side. Uh, it's just a, a you know, Jimi Hendrix, Andre Benjamin of, of Outcast, And then a bunch of ladies kind of uh, in his neck. <laughs> what do you think about that poster there? I, I think ladies in the neck already says Oscar bait, but I also think that it's going to get stepped on by uh, the James Brown movie that just came out. Like, I feel like you think that's going to, but that's not Oscar bait. No, it's that not Oscar they, bait. They, they but screwed has, up with the James Brown movie, not a, a, releasing it in, in fall. I think it's still so that's close. That's when people want to listen to music that came out a million years fall. ago. They yeah. want to listen to it during fall? No, I think that it's still going to work under that umbrella, right? I think people are still going to be like, oh, I saw this movie three months ago. But this is, I mean, like Jimi Hendrix. There's only so many like rock gods that you can like win Oscars by portraying them and pretending to sing like them. Side note, I've seen a plaster cast of that man's penis. The famous plaster cast of Jimi Hendrix's dick is it famous oh yeah no no, no. there were like the famous groupies the plaster casters that were yeah like, it was one lady I think yeah was, yeah uh, I always I, uh, for whatever oh, reason I knew it was right. one lady and her friend or whatever but oh, like gotcha. uh yeah no that they were the plaster casters and they would like do plaster casts of rock stars dicks yeah so the guy who's in charge of like all of the hard rock cafe paraphernalia works out of the hard rock cafe resort in Las Vegas and that hangs in his office or at least it did at the time I saw it huh all right uh let's go ahead and take a look at uh two night stand uh ashley tipton and miles teller two young white people sitting in bed eating out of bowls laughing she seems to find him funny he seems to be looking at a bird out of his window and clearly neither of them have cancer so (laughs) fault in our stars wins again (laughs) 
Uh, here we go. People are actually asking to, to look at these posters. All right, so there oh, we gosh. go. Cry babies. Two night stand. Uh, so you think that? So that listen, we did this really successful show that Jeff Kanata fucking loved about like you know the franchising of the Groundhog Day uh-huh. thing. What do you say we franchise cancer? <laughs> yeah. What movies can we do? Rocky with cancer. Oh, that'd be really good. Who has the cancer? Is What's going to win first? Wait, didn't Rocky was, wasn't the newest one Rocky with cancer? Didn't Adrian die of cancer? She was dead by the time the movie started. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So, so who has like, cancer, him or his son? Is he fighting against cancer or against the idea of cancer? All right. Real quick. Pause. So United's got these movies that you play just uh-huh. on your phone for free. And they got a bunch of 30 for 30s on there. Oh, they do? Yeah. I didn't even see that. I've been watching. I've been going through the Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> and so I watched with cancer. The, the Iron Man with cancer. It's like, oh, man, I'm in the Iron Man suit, but it's giving me cancer. Actually, I guess that's kind of Iron Man too, right? But they fucking pussed out. Palladium poisoning? What fucking people want. What the people want is cancer. Yeah. They need a nose hose or nothing. That's it. Yeah. Uh so they put, speaking of cancer, the, uh, oh, fuck, and I forget his name now. It's called Into the Wind, the one about the Canadian who has one leg. A cyclist? No, he oh. has one leg and he's running across Canada. Okay. And, like, he becomes, like, a Canadian folk hero. And uh, it's just, like, a major thing. And I have now can tick off my life box crying in first class oh no i'm like <laughs> i mean spoiler alert it's about a guy with cancer guess how it ends like <laughs> it's fucking heartbreaking it's really really well done it was directed by steve nash the fucking basketball player but wow. it, was, it was great it was really yeah. really well done and you can side watch it on united to play. the side note side terry note. fox people are saying side note to the side note how are you liking the united streaming content stuff oh my god like it's a, it blows my fucking mind that so everyone good, right? has not done this forever. And it's but, so smart because all of the devices are only going to get better. You're not locking them into the back of the seat. Take that fucking bullshit screen out of every goddamn thing. They can make update, everything cheaper. Yeah. Like, and, and, but here's why United is actually smart. And like, this is kind of going to sound like us blowing United, uh, but which they suck for a million other different reasons. Like, don't worry. Like yeah. airlines are universally bad. Everything never you think say negative about nice United about is airlines. actually true. They were really smart in playing a longer game mm-hmm. of let's be the shitty airline that doesn't have Wi-Fi mm. for years. Yeah. While everybody else just went with GoGo. Yeah. And installed all their shit in there. Let's and are build into our Go-Go own contracts now. Exactly. Yeah. Let's build our own Wi-Fi. So now I don't know if you've noticed they have very vari- the variable pricing. Mm-hmm. It's not always the same. So yeah. it looks like they're just doing like testing on like what people yeah. really want. I was on pay. one flight that was like a dollar an hour. Yes, that yeah. was smart. Hourly pricing. Fucking yeah. who knew? Because uh, this makes sense. And like, even at their highest price points, they're cheaper than GoGo. They are. So like they're experimenting with it, and this is easily the smartest thing. You've got everybody on Wi-Fi. It's a closed <laughs> network. You don't have to worry about streaming shit. You just have them. It's like crystal clear HD, like free content that yeah. you would basically be giving away anyway. And a lot of it's like it's like a good ass movie you'd find on Netflix is usually like one of them. So it's like yeah. Zombie Land, League of Their Own, like all the Iron Man, all the Iron. Oh wait, all of them? Yeah. You saw three on there? Uh, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, God and damn. then I moved on to uh, uh, Men in Black Three. Not as good as the Iron Man movies, <laughs> but it's like. But here's the here's worth the, it for free. But the awesome thing. So who who made the biggest splash with all of the uh, on screen or in flight content uh, and Wi Fi? Virgin. Virgin, of yeah. course. And now Virgin's shit, old and busted. Like they their uh, interface is terrible. Now that we're all used to interfaces and what they should look like. Yeah. And now United has done this thing where the interface is an app on your own goddamn device. Like they can update it in the app score app store every week. Yeah. And it can always so look good. smart. By the way, the Virgin interface kind of looked like poo poo 
like even when it was like the hotness. It was just it was just awesome for awesome that it existed. Awesome for airlines. It was yeah. always graded on a curve. Right. And now kind of United's got the belt, man. Like like there's there's nobody yeah. else that's doing like free movies on your phone. Yeah. The and only that's bummer is rad. lately I've I've had a lot of flights where like either you get this awesome experience or you get nothing. And then also like power drain is a big thing. If they don't get outlets on all their seats soon, uh, especially if they're going to make you watch stuff on your own device, and that's going to be a bummer. It's a good point. It probably is not as good for people who don't constantly get upgraded to first class uh, yeah. and or carry batteries Two, because yeah. they're literally on the road for fucking forever. <laughs> carry a backup battery for your phone and two laptops <laughs> that are fully charged <laughs> on every flight. <laughs> like every flight I've taken out my laptop and just plugged the phone back into that. Oh, and also it does a really good job of picking up where you left off. You can switch to the laptop and it'll just like sync up with where you left off on your phone. For real? Yeah. Fall TV. Is there anything you're excited about with Fall TV? <laughs> uh, have you taken a look at Gotham yet? I've taken a look at it. I haven't mm. watched it. Uh, it's like every time it has me. Yeah. Like, and I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, because I loved Rome. So which you is watched what, like a stretch of it? No, I just watched oh. like commercials and, gotcha. and like clips online or whatever. And I loved Rome. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch Rome? No. Rome was great on HBO. Same showrunner. Uh, I'm like, oh, wow. Like a Rome-esque Cause it's like, you look at Rome and it's like, oh, okay, well, I wonder if this dude has a, like a, a, a history of dealing with mythology, but writing his own stories in it. I don't know. He did it with fucking ancient Rome. <laughs> I think he can handle commissioner Gordon. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, he has the pedigree. It looks like he has the talent, the actor, the, all the acting uh, seems to be by the reviews steady. What shakes me out is just, and I'm sure it's fucking some note from the network that it's like, you can't just have somebody named Oswald Cobblepot. You have to have somebody go, hey, penguin guy. Someone should say, you're a penguin. And he should go, mack, mack, mack. I don't know. I, mack, mack. I might be a penguin. And then just do the rest of the script. Because like that's what like whenever I see that I'm like I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm so out. It's funny that you not even having seen it came uh, came to that same conclusion because I watched the entire first episode and it's like minus those things a solid like network procedural. Yeah. Um. Like but not with amazing, Batman, but which, which which elevates it right? Right. Because you you'd rather like a competent yeah. procedural that starred Commissioner Gordon yeah. and dealt with. Just regular crime shit like in Gotham. Super rad. Yeah. And the first episode obviously is going to have like some character introduction and some exposition, but it didn't need as many character introductions as it had. And it was constantly doing the thing where it's like, uh, like, all right, tell me what this bullet casing is all about, Nigma. And then he's like, all right, blah, 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 blah. All right, see you later, Edward. You're a weirdo who likes riddles too much. <laughs> and like, that's that. So it's like always trying really hard to not be introducing people by being like, uh, like, hey, Oswald, why don't you come on over here and bring your umbrella? Bloop, 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 bloop. Cobble pot, you're such a penguin. And yeah. you're like, oh, come on. Like breaking into two doesn't make it better. It's still a heavy handed, awkward thing. And it would have been so much better served by having that exact same character doing the exact same things and not even giving him a name this episode. Well, and that's it's where kind of Marvel has been smart. Mm -hmm. Let the nerds explain it to the straights. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking they did Howard the Duck in the most popular movie of the year yeah. and all the neck beards like fucking me and Brett leaned over <laughs> to the fucking actual contributing members of society <laughs> that fucking make the world run and don't give a fuck about this shit and said hey, this is, that was Howard the Duck Howard the Duck was a comic and but then it was a movie it's so, the first Marvel movie so ever. It was directed by George it Lucas it in 1980. It was produced. Everybody thinks it's directed by George Lucas, <laughs> but it was just produced. But I was thought that it was like a really bad movie. So they're just like saying, oh, hey, we're like, we're Marvel. Now we're good. So like, <laughs> you have to know that that's what I that don't is. care. Was it Stan Lee <laughs> or not? <laughs> it's fine. Let us do it. Let us lean over to our yeah. girlfriends. Not to be sexist. Let the girlfriends lean over to their boyfriends yeah. and say, that's the penguin. He's... Remember the or penguin? don't let me wonder and that like DC has done some awesome TV for like 
Like, The Arrow is a really solid show on CW that doesn't do that shit. Like, you can watch it for an entire season and then find out, like, oh, that's But the trade-off is that it does, it is just, like, dipped in in CW, right? Oh, for sure. It's a CW show. Like, it's it's a CW show. Shots of abs with the the green arrow and the flash mask over his abs. And he's just like, (laughs) these abs run really fast. To be fair, if you erased all of the DC from Arrow and all of the DC from Gotham, Gotham is probably a better show just watching this one episode. Yeah. But you can't erase it. Instead, they're introducing a character every other minute. And what? So they introduce Catwoman, Riddler, Penguin, whoever the fuck Jada Pinkett Smith is, Commissioner Gordon. Jada Pinkett Smith was in it? Isn't she? Oh. Is I she? Uh, s- okay. She might be one of the Carmine Falcone people. And yeah. He is introduced. So Carmine, uh, Commissioner Gordon, fucking the other. The, Harvey the, Bullock. Harvey Bullock. Montoya. Montoya. Uh, which is and really Montoya is from, from Batman Year One, right? Or she. No, I think Montoya is a much older character. Like, she doesn't exist. Well, in the Batman that I read, she doesn't exist until Batman's Batman. She's like a newer hire. So Year One. And she's Batgirl's. Well, I, I would assume that this is, is drawing a lot of a, really weird a lot of a, uh, from year one, which is not in this timeline, yeah, uh, or does not sync up timeline wise, but is as much a Commissioner Gordon on this, like you know, getting yeah. his feet story as it is a Batman, yeah, getting his feet story. I think going in, it's going to be more like a Brubaker Gotham Central kind of thing, where oh, it will okay. be a procedural kind of thing. But yeah, so like real quick rundown. Uh, Penguin, yeah, Riddler, yeah, Montoya, Bullock, Gordon. Uh, Would you would expect? I mean, Carmine those Falcone. those you would expect, including Carmine. Mm-hmm. Th- that would be if you're establishing a yeah. procedural show. Those are just your main characters. Yeah, Bruce Thomas and Martha Wayne. Yeah, all introduced, and then uh, who else? There were more. It was just awful. It was just all the time people were being introduced. It's an hour show, and everyone and got Catwoman, right? And Catwoman, yeah, who's like a kid. I just. And it's the same thing where it's like, hey, girl jumping across the rooftops. Hey, you stole milk. Hey, you gave it to a cat. That's all really cute. <laughs> it's just, I hope, I mean, and you can never judge shit by pilot. I'm okay. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. No, 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 no. I'm just saying in general, you can yeah. never judge shit by pilots because right. pilots totally are not true. for viewers. Right. Pilots are for network suits well, that's to in give the them. Days. Now pilots are shot to go to air. No, no, no. But, but. To go to air, right? You need to prove to the network suits, yeah, that because it's like, if 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 properties just were greenlit for episodes, mm-hmm. then we would Which, have seen how are Wonder we not Woman. Not to that point yet. We would have seen Let Wonder it Woman fail after thirteen episodes. Well, I don't know. I mean, that gets into a whole yeah. bigger discussion. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner. Where are you at on Thanksgiving dinner? What's your what 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 what's your, the big thing that you look forward to every Thanksgiving dinner? Don't put this on me. This is definitely your topic. You are itching to talk about your Thanksgiving dinner. All right, you want to rank it? Yeah. Here we go. Uh, stuffing, number one. Really? Oh, number yeah. one. Number one. Above turkey, above pie. Above turkey, above pie. You're a crazy person. Want to know why? It's the only thing that can change every year. It can be your favorite thing and be slightly different. Turk, good turkey is always going to be good turkey. Good fucking pumpkin pie, apple pie, whatever kind of pie you're really into is going to be, you want it to just hit a consistent mark. That's the thing. Stuffing, pie, it's a different pie every year. Okay, well, I, you can't just fucking put pie. I can. I can put pie above stuffing. If you get stuffing because it changes, I get pie because it changes, and pie is better than stuffing. Inherently, stuffing, I Stuffing, no, pies are just different. You're, you're looking at apple pie, rhubarb pie, fucking pumpkin pie, right? You like got crust, like, you got filling. You have crust and filling. I'm saying... More likely, you are to look at something called stuffing. You would call the same thing stuffing, but they could be different enough. Oh, shit. Is that cranberries in there this year? I don't know what you're year? calling pie. Are, are they cran- I, I don't call know. It pie. Fucking maybe and this I one eat it. is and fucking. It's delicious. And you can add. Also, it gets the fucking like if if stuffing is Batman, gravy is Robin. <laughs> and fucking like they mix very, very well together. They're solving crimes in your stomach. Well, here's the thing about stuff. Peter Pan is going to be coming to NBC. Christopher Walken is is Captain Hook, and Brian Williams' daughter is uh, Peter Pan. She's also the one who doesn't get naked on girls. What do you do? You bored now? Do you have any interest? So no, no interest. None. Well, you don't like musical. You don't like music in general, let alone musicals. Definitely don't like musicals. 
Is there... And I've seen Peter Pan enough There's times. no musical that you enjoy? No, I like musicals as long as they employ, like, childlike songs. So if there's songs that, like, five-year-old Brett can follow as well as 33-year-old Brett, then I'm all on board. Because this so, is like, the learning Avenue, disability you Avenue have Q. about music. I do. I have a learning disability like, about music. Like, you don't... Yeah, I'm musically autistic. Explain your music block. I just... It's background noise all the time. It doesn't... Like, there's nothing to explain. It barely exists in my world. And so if a musical is delivering plot through song, I'm always going to miss it. All right. Musicals. We're talking about uh, the, the fall preview of your music block. Yeah, uh, all right. You told me a story once about driving back to your parents' house <laughs> yeah. and the radio yeah. that blew my fucking mind yeah. and illustrates perfectly your music block. Do you okay. know what I'm talking about? I Probably, yeah. You left the radio, like, not static, like yeah. so radio was on in LA and I drove three hours and you drove three hours to Fresno yeah, or at the outskirts of Fresno right. wherever. And you, when you got to the house was only when you realized <laughs> that the music was on, right. you would listen to music the entire time without in any way acknowledging that like, Oh no, it's deeper than that. Okay. Do you not I, like, I started to turn the car off. I put it in park and I was like, Oh, the radio is playing static. Because oh. I had left with it playing music gotcha. and driven an undiscernible amount of miles and then it started playing <laughs> it static. It left the and LA even radio that station. never registered in my brain. All right. Uh, we read your emails and then wrap this gigantic double sized edition of the Jury Podcast up right after we play yet another edition from uh, Neshcom's uh, Mercury Counter album. Go ahead and buy that somewhere. It's awesome. This one comes in from Russell. Russell says, just wanted to throw my two cents in about Elevator Gate. After reading up on it a bit, I think Rebecca Watson's expectation that somebody can't even ask her to drink coffee with another person if they're of the opposite gender is a little ridiculous and it makes her sound like a misanthropic hermit who clearly doesn't understand or recognize genuine humor and human interaction. If the world worked how she wanted to, we'd probably go instinct due to the lack of ever being able to make connections with anybody simply because she views normal interactions as unwanted sexual advances. I believe the phrase no means no or don't even dare ask. Uh, I think if she wants to avoid any male attention, including non-aggressive attention from men, she should probably carry a sign around or something that makes it clear to the world. That said, the gender-based scathing responses she received along with the harassment and threats were infinitely worse than anything she said or thought, and everyone involved should be deeply ashamed of themselves. Disagree, even insult her, and call her a misanthrope if you're a jerk like me, but don't harass, intimidate, or threaten her, because that's never okay. Uh, so, I... You know what falls under the category of harass, intimidate, or threaten? Getting... Punched out in an elevator. No, wait. You're thinking of a totally different elevator gate. JK. <laughs> you're thinking of the Ray Rice elevator gate. This JK. Is a whole other thing in which I'll explain to you later. But uh, yeah, this, I wanted to read this email because it explained something very clear, which is I want to live in a world and I hope I live in a world where we can loudly have opinions and disagree with people, but those who loudly have opinions and disagree can also universally condemn like threats and harassment and, and shit. Punching that, people in the face in elevators. Okay, you're caving up for an issue that is totally not where we're at right now. Oh. Uh, but thank you very, very much to Russell for this. I disagree with where you're at, but 
That's the beauty part of the internet. That's the beautiful part about having a community in which we can talk about things is that I can respectfully disagree and we can both agree. And when you get fucking personal and start yelling and screaming shit about like, you know, killing and raping and murdering people, shit ain't cool. And no punching people. And no punching people. Brett's really wrapped up in this. Ken says, I've been thinking about the classic American dream and believe that the classic definition is evolving. New adults, or whatever you call that generation, are less motivated by money. They care less about ownership and are more concerned with pursuing their passion. Guys like Zuckerberg and Notch never set out to make billions of dollars. They, they just stumbled upon it while following their passion. Even older guys like Bill Gates aren't motivated simply to pursue profit anymore. Effectively, the world is organically becoming more socialist and then I uh, hit back on the thing. Um, thank you. Uh, bu- 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 uh, is more, uh, I mean, the utopian socialism of fanciful dreams, not the swear word that American politicians call each other uh, simply to pursue profit. Uh, that was by Ken. Funny how Zuckerberg and Notch wound up being billionaires despite <laughs> pursuing profit. Not pursuing profit, according to Ken. Uh, yeah. I disagree with you, Ken. Um, I don't think that the world is evolving to be a more socialist place. I think that the more we are able to trade with each other and, and not have to go through somebody else, the better off we all are. But, you know, to each their own. I don't think the American dream was ever necessarily about profit either. And I think there are always people who have accidentally made a lot of money. Yeah, I think to me the American dream is about clean slates it, it's about you know being able to reinvent yourself it, it's about it, opportunity and freedom yeah brian says dear jury i enjoy you on every podcast i hear you on and was of course happy a while back to hear that you had your own podcast goody i said i love this guy even more jury but what to my fuckity fucking surprise jury is a potty mouth <laughs> which you are definitely a new listener to me if, uh, <laughs> and have only listened to me on the Frog Pants Network if, if that is a surprise to you. I mean, if you use the word fuck more than once in a sentence and more than 20 times in five minutes, it means you are either mentally or verbally challenged or still in high school. Since none of these are true, I can't imagine why an individual as intelligent as you would find the need to curse in such a potty mouth fashion. Fuck, you're saying fuck. Love the show. So... A lot wrapped up in that email. It's a lot, right? Here's my line. Because a lot of people who have come to listen to this show come from the Frog Pants Network, which in general uh, you know, is PG-13. It's two shits or one fuck, you know? <laughs> uh, this tends to be a little bit more graphic on a lot of levels. I'll, I'll, I mean, I don't think that Scott Johnson would go into you might be a rapist as a Jeff Foxworthy <laughs> bit, right? But... I do. I am conscious of the idea that I know fuck for me as a word can be a verbal crutch in the same way that ums and ahs can be a verbal crutch. And I want to avoid that because I do know that that tends to turn off some people and I don't care about them as devices in language to hammer something home. So for anybody who does feel that I say fuck too much, Usually it's an indication that I didn't prepare enough for the show and I'm trying to fill space. If you would like to email us, it is justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. You can find the podcast on Stitcher, iTunes, or some other shit. Twitter and Instagram is Justin R. Young. And of course, you can hashtag join the conversation at diamondclub.reddit.com. Brett, how's Mission Pick doing? Oh, awesome. We, uh, we're hiring a new developer who starts tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of new episodes uh, updates coming out soon. Um, we're still keeping enrollment pretty light, uh, but absolutely, if you're listening to the podcast, go find it on the App Store, iOS. It's Mission Pick, uh, and it's a fun game that's really uh, quaint right now, but it'll get bigger shortly. It's very awesome. Everybody should go check it out. It is super fun, and it is the the sign that it has been sticky in my mind is when I miss a day. I feel like a train has left and I wasn't on it. It, it is <laughs> it is addictive in that way. You are you should be very very proud because it is super rad. Everybody go check it out. Download it right now. Uh, Mission Pick on the iOS App Store and yep. then maybe eventually at some point coming to Android. Yeah, not uh, in the near future, but probably within the next year. 
Tomorrow. It's coming to Android. Tomorrow. Look for it. That about wraps it up. Again, folks, we've talked about rapists. We've talked about Peter Pan. We've talked about heroin use. But I would like to let everybody know that should you find yourself looking to move towns, unable to crack the top 10 on Mission Pick, vexed on whether or not Elevator Gate respo- is about Rebecca Watson or Janae Rice, then please, in your deepest, darkest moments, please don't die! Yeah.